right. So hello and welcome everyone to another one of Game RT's uh, event sessions. This is a learn and play part of the learn and play series where today we'll be exploring ca the classic game of backgammon. I'm Danielle Costello. I'm a research and instruction librarian from Louisiana State. I'm also the current game event programming co-chair and in particular for today, I'm your co-host and tech team. With me today, I have Regina and Thomas. If you'll introduce yourselves and let everybody know where you're from and what you're about. Uh, hi, I'm Regina Boulay Sweeten. I'm in Portales, New Mexico. We're dry and dusty over here. Um, I'm the Archives and Special Collections Librarian, um, and I like playing games and doing fiber arts. And my name is Thomas Vos. I'm director of the Ruth M. Lowe Library of Garrett County in Western Maryland, and I also like playing games. It's lots of fun. But uh, we also like getting the word out about gaming and libraries. All of us here are gamer. Indeed. So I want to let everybody know that this event is being recorded and the recording will be available at Game RT members for six months before pu becoming publicly available on our website. <laughs> we also have our live stream this session. So hello, Twitch and Twitch viewers. Uh, the Twitch video on demand will also be accessible after six months, uh, only member only period. And if you aren't following us on Game RT Twitch already, please do so so you can see all the other events and many different series that we have to educate games and libraries and for People who are not previously familiar with Games RT, we are the Games and Gaming Roundtable of the American Library Association. Our mission is to promote gaming and libraries, whether that's programming, collection development, community building, prototyping, playtesting, or research. We have it all here on this channel, as well as in uh, person, because soon we're going to, very, very soon, we're going to be in uh, annual and live in Chicago with a variety of events. Um, so Thomas, if you'll pull up the slide so I can show everybody all the events we have going on um, real soon at annual slide <laughs> i've got slide. it uh, oh you got regina, it either way <laughs> thank you regina there it is awesome hey. yeah. well yeah so the first um event will be on friday and that's june 23rd and it's going to be in the hilton chicago international and it's going to be our ala play this is where we have all of our games of all uh, shapes and stripes and we're going to showcase them and play together and have a really great time Following that on June 24th from four to five and um, just follow all the locations. It's all going to be in the um, annual uh, uh, ALA scheduler. Uh, we're going to have games in school libraries. So go beyond Candyland with an introduction to modern board game in the hobby. We'll preview games that allow for decision making, logic and choices rather than roles and move classics. Uh, many of the best games for kids and families are language independent yet foster language development. As communities face time, face challenging times in the pandemic, games are an excellent tool to promote social and emotional development. With time for play and plan, we'll have your choice of games to dig into and center in the current uh, and center on current new programs programming. We'll share general resources and continue the gaming journey for all types of libraries that focus on kids and families. And then on the day following, we're going to have our president's program where a bunch of us are going to show you how to run uh, a TTRPGM. And then we're going to create role-playing games for your libraries together. And we're going to have all the mechanics and tools there for you to make some excellent times. And finally, the most wonderful event of all, I believe, is the ALA Trivia Championship. This is where you can uh, compete for trivia glory. Um, so it is well known that librarians are the best at trivia, but who is the best of the best? Join us for the national championship co-sponsored by GamesRT, RUSA, and MMRT, and compete for the title of Reference Champion of America in this team-based trivia win. So it was an exciting time last time, and I hope you all join us for all these events. Uh, I think that it's a, said, a good point. To, oh. You mentioned the scheduler. This is a good point to remind people that you can, like, favorite things in the scheduler so you don't miss them. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. It, there are a lot of events at annual. If you haven't been before, it is very easy to lose track and miss where things are. If you do schedule those events, there's also kind of pullouts for maps and things. So you can figure out how to get from one thing to another in the most efficient and best way possible. And if you need help, the Games and Gaming Roundtable will be having a booth at 13 19 it's in the back left hand corner of the uh, map which is also available on ala's website and we're gonna that's where the gaming rope is as well so if you ever have any questions about when events are or what's happening please come and see us and say hello uh so that all said uh let's get on with today's presentation there's going to be a q a at the end of the session questions will be asked uh, you can ask them in chat or you can post them on the twitch chat i'll grab them for the uh, q a afterwards and then I'm, 
really how the session's going to go is our presenters will uh, be able to provide us a lot of different resources, and those are going to be um, linked in the uh, chat as well. Uh, that all said, you guys take it away. Thank you. Oh, okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So, welcome to Learn and Play for Backgammon. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to jump right in with a little bit of the history of Backgammon and kind of some of the nuts and boltsies. Um, so, its ancestors date to around 5,000 years ago, probably originated in what's modern day Iraq. Um, but those are sort of the, the ancestors where it came from. The word backgammon didn't appear in print until 1635 in a letter by James Howell spelled backgammon. And so the back um, is back, just means back, but gammon means game. I'm, I'm like, well, what does the back mean? I don't know. They did not, nothing I was reading share, shared why back was important. Fun um, fact, gammon was also a word for swindling somebody. Oh, uh, you know, that seems more likely because it, you could do gambling with it. In fact, um, one of the, uh, you know, they probably had earlier mentions of it, or they did have earlier, like, pictures, and I'll show one in a little bit um, from an earlier time, but it they um, had references to, like, playing at the tables, which could have been playing this game, or it could have just been the general term for playing a table game. Just like when you say you're playing at cards, you could be playing poker, you could be playing go fish, you're just playing a card game. Um, so, but it's had a little bit of a tumultuous back and forth sometimes with the gambling aspect. Um, Cause people are like, you can't yeah. play this, it's gambling. Um, and there was actually a court case where someone argued that yes, you know, there is a chance aspect, but you can see everything that's on the board. It's not like poker where you can like, you know, have this uncertainty. So it's a game of skill, not, you know, gambling. Um, and these rules that were determining um, what the game was, was pretty much settled by mid 19th century. You can definitely find variants earlier. One time I was at a, a, a um, Frontier Festival and they had a pamphlet of like, you know, uh, 18th century variants. And it's like, oh, these are weird games. Um, doubling is a uh, aspect of the game. You don't have to do doubling, but if you're gambling, you can do that, or you can make it go faster. If you're like, listen, this game's going nowhere, just give up now. Um, and that didn't appear until about 100 years ago. Um, and I thought it was interesting that when I was doing this research, I also found out there's this multiplayer version, Chouette, um, and I'd never heard about that, so because it's usually a two-player game. So that might be something that you could you know, find Chouette rules and play that to have more library patrons with a single board. Um, I just, I loved the picture because it's from the Spanish Book of Games and the first copy is completed in 1283. So, you know, we didn't have the word until 1600s, but this is obviously a backgammon board. This is the pieces, this has the dice. So, um, but yeah, this is a really neat um, game of just different tabletop board games um which hey this is the audience that you know if you want to go look at more into this it's a really cool thing um so this is a modern board um so you can see it has the same um places for these little circles to go so those are the points and then you have the checkers or pieces or men i'm used to calling them men but i've used the term checkers throughout here Feel like it's just more of a neutral term and it's not like for chess where you've got chess men and they look like people so, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um and if you're thinking ah checkers like the game checkers yes you can actually have the same pieces and sometimes you can find a board game that's like a combination chess checkers backgammon and so it'll have the same pieces for the checkers side on the chess board that you use on this side for back on the other side for backgammon um other games throughout history that have used similar boards were, were include Senate, our old learn and play friend, and Moncala. Um, and the basic, basic of gameplay um, is that you want to get all your pieces off the board. You move in a U shape and you have to get them all into your six home uh, points before you can start getting them off. Um, there are dice rolls, as you'll see. Um, 
And it's not just who can get there first, because if you have a piece that's by itself, it could be jumped and it has to start all the way back at the beginning. And you can't move any other pieces until you put that piece back on the board. And I'm sure that will come out in gameplay. Um, one of us will find an opportunity to jump a piece. Yeah. Um, and so it's there's lots of little things, and we'll kind of get into that as we go. But we could, if there's a, unless there's anything else you can think of, Tom, we could just start playing. No, no, uh, old game, you know, based on even older games, and uh, let's give it a try. All right. Let me go ahead now. I'm gonna pull it, I'm gonna take over here now. Um our invite a friend here and let me copy it and chat. There you go. Go ahead and click on that. And oops, actually I think I might have to sorry, hang on. Do another one. Hang on, try again. Try again. There we go. Try that one. All, All right, right. business. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Now, uh, I thought it was very interesting what you shared about that uh, medieval picture, the Libro de los Huegos. Um, in fact, uh, that's the first I've heard of that. I'm going to have to take a look myself here. But it all has like it has two people sitting on either side of a board, but it has like an aerial aerial view of the board. So it's not. It looks like it's standing up on its side, but it's just an aerial view of the board so you can see the game. I was like, yeah, oh, this is great. It looks like there's a bunch of interesting things in there. I'm going to have to read up yeah, on that. Right. <laughs> Other pictures I could find oh, was interesting. You. They um, Hang on. Hang on. Oops, yeah, other pictures had hard. people knocking the board off as they were gambling. So I'm like, oh, maybe someone was cheating. Hmm. Sorry, it looks like I have to send you another one because oh. it looks like they're real finicky about this hang on a second chat um sending it over try again i think we have to move fairly quickly here so um all right so now we roll the dice and so to begin the way you figure out who starts is each person rolls their dice um and whoever has the higher number they get to go first and that would be you so go for it all right so i'm just going to minimize it so i can see your face while we are going all right so i kind of like what about this it shows green for all the pieces you can move mm -hmm. um and so and whenever you click that one it shows you where you can move so i roll so i have a five and a one i don't have six i have a five and a one so if there was something that has two or more i can't land there um you can't just be cumulative you have to treat the rolls separately yeah, so let's see here. I'm going to be a jerk and land over here on you. <gasps> and then I'm going to try and make my way this way. We'll see how it goes. Your turn. All righty. So I've got to get back in on the, the top. So if you click here, I can see I can come either one of these. Um, not a great one. Because if I had, let's say I came in on the four and then I had a two, I could block this up and stop mm -hmm. him from jumping on me. But also if he does jump on one of these, <clears throat> I'm not put that far back. And you can see under- oh, Gonna have to do it again. <laughs> you can see under the them and under you, it says like pip. And so what that means is that's how many points you have to move back uh, or have, till all of your things are off because each triangle is one space so one pip would have to move on all 24 um so you can kind of use it to get an idea of how the game is going but if things are set up poorly for you it might not matter as many the exact number of pips mm -hmm. so i'm going to come in on the one all and right. so this one that mm -hmm. he had it's going to have to start all the way back yep the lame man Oh, and you know what? I'm also gonna I'm gonna do it again because I put these two unblocked, and now he has to roll and bring both of them in before he can move anything else. Yep, and I can't move that second one, so it's your turn. Yep, and that's a good point. If you can't move, if you can move, you have to. If you can't, then it just skips you. Next one to three and one. So since these two are right, separated. If I roll things that are too separate, I can block up to keep him 
for leaving this home area. Oh no, that's okay. It's now I'm going to try to roll a one. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. I didn't roll a one. But I think I will come in on four. And that way I can move this other one five. And it's not off by itself. All right. Let's see. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. What can we do here? Yeah, I don't like that either. Oh, let's go with that, and then we'll go with that, I guess. All right. Okay. Oh, <gasps> yes, oh. it doubles. It breaks out into quadruples, actually. Yep. And so you can move four pieces, doubles five, or... or you can move one piece, five, four times. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and start blocking up over here. And I do like how because the the points are different colors alternating, you can kind of say, okay, five, you can count like, okay, there's this many um, light browns, this many dark browns, which is nice. So I can, if you're playing on a board and you don't have the, the lighting up, you can just count faster with those. I don't want to do that. We do want to. Oh. All right. So there's that. And we'll start making my way over. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and move this one all the way in so it's not off by itself. All righty. Let's see here. So. Um, oh, I guess we'll do that. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. All right. And I can see easily that I need a four because it's the second dark brown, so I can calculate quickly. <laughs> I think I'm going to come in on a five so I can move this other one three and it's still blocked okay. up. Hmm. What to do? No, I don't like that. And I don't like that. Oh, I guess I better do that and that. See, if I had five and a four, I can move them to that first pit that you have unguarded. Mm. But no, but that's okay because I know that one that I have all, all by itself, I, I know that it's moving six, we'll take it to the same spot on the next section and then I have got to stop the one so it'll be blocked up if you happen to run over there. Hmm, let's see here. Well I want to protect him. And I want to protect him. So all right. <laughs> see the fact that you're protecting on your home screen tells me that you want to try to jump one of my men and you want to make sure it doesn't get so I don't want come in on one of your guys. <laughs> hmm. Wow you're already getting close to Bearing off your hand. Um, and that is a note that you can you win the game, but you get backgammon if you, what is it? If mm -hmm. it, it's because you can win or you can get back gam, you can get yeah. gammon, backgammon, or double backgammon. And double backgammon is if you like get all your pieces off before, or that, yeah, or backgammon, you get all the pieces off before the other person is able to. And double backgammon yeah. is. They don't even have, they're not even in their home space. They're just. Well, there's also, I think that one of them involves also, I think it's regular back end that involves having a um, piece on the bar too. Mm. The other person has a piece on the bar still. And that is something you can do like a blitz. So if I have, you know, three things in my home area that are blocked off, but if I had them all blocked off and you had one up on the bar, then. Oh, but okay but watch this that's gonna get I have me. to use my sixes i can't take these other two because you've got the reds blocked there so i can only move over to the one and you might oh. to go a one now oh i hope so <gasps> oh, <no. laughs> i needed that um but yeah my options are limited otherwise too yeah so now i might get i think really you're gonna short. get me in the return here Oh, or not. 
And the only thing I can move without exposing for the one is to just move this forward. All which right. is fine. I like to have my pieces sort of evenly dispersed in the the home area. Because then it makes bearing off more easy. Uh, I guess we'll go this way. But yeah, I'm in trouble here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sort of even these things out. Mm, let's see here. Because if I, I could have moved that I'll one that's all the way point. off the edge, but then it would have been out in the open. Better start trying to get you guys over here. Oh, oh, well. Yes, I will go ahead and do a five and a four. Oh, okay. Oops. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do the same thing. Hopefully. Yep. Okay. All right. Got five. Okay. I think if you do jump. I'm trying to figure out if I should move one of these other ones too, like the one that's in the five, or start moving in. I think I will go ahead and start moving in. You might jump my guy, but your home court has three hey. spaces open. Snake eyes. Hmm. But they're double, so it's really? total oh, four. It didn't really do much for me. <laughs> well, your uh, three pieces that are over oh, near your home court, you could bring two of them into the hmm. home area. All right, so roll the three. They're all in my home area now. Uh, I can start to bear off. So I've got a one. So, so does this read one a double? I mean, if I was being aggressive, I would. But. <laughs> or for playing for money. So yeah, that double yeah. is a weird one to get used to. Yeah, and, it, and it's kind of thing where you could also, I could offer to double and you could just say, no thanks. And But then the game ends. Yeah, but that you'd only lose one point. Yeah. Um, and so I'm gonna take the 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 uh points starting from the right are one, two, three, four, five, six. And so yeah. because I rolled a one, I'm gonna take the one off the first one. I could instead move something one space. Gotta get moving over here. All right, and so. I can take something off the five because I've got something on the five. I have nothing on a, the two, so I have to move something two. So I'm going to move the, the thing from the five to the three. So that way, because if I moved from six to four, you might have jumped. Hey. Oh, uh, that's really good. That I needed. Uh, you know, it emotionally hurts me when I roll double sixes and I can't use them. <laughs> it's like, no. I got to get these guys over there. Mm -hmm. That was a perfect time to get up sixes. All right, so get six and the one. Uh, but now I, I don't have anything trouble. on one, two, and four. So if I roll those, I have to move things instead of bearing off. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, this is good. I like to have things even so that way I can bear off, don't have empty spaces, but rolling sixes and fives are, if you can manage to do that with chance. Do that. Hmm. Well, that was interesting. So it has like a timer. Oh, so it gives me 30 seconds on this app to roll and then a minute to make my move. Mm. Okay, so I can move the three. Yeah, they're pretty the the time restrictions here. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> One thing that's nice about playing yeah, online is happen. you don't have oh, to move. No. <laughs> oh, so yeah, whenever we don't have to move the dice in order to let, like when you're done with your turn, you have to move your dice so the next person can play because your turn is done when you move the dice and can't undo anything. But it's also just I feel polite to get it out of someone's way so they can see what they're doing. But for online, you don't have to do that because it just moves it for you, and then the, it will set the board back up for us. Yeah. I do love the clack, 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 because you can play like, you know, you can have pieces that are like little metal checkers, but I have um, uh, oh, stone ones. Oh, that's I'm um, almost, almost. 
like if you get doubles, you might be able to get everyone in. Uh, I don't know. Nope, nope, you've got this. You can get everyone in with that. Well, I did get everyone in at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we play again? Sure, might as well. And see, it just sets it back up for us. It's mighty nice. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna win again. Okay, wow. you're up first. 3-1 three, three, is a, one of my favorite opening moves because you can start blocking off your home area to keep your opponent trapped. Oh, oh. And, the, and then you got it as well. So you can either do that or do a different thing. Oh. Uh, so yeah. there's certain opening moves that like three oh, and one are great true. or four and two because sure. those two are separate. But I also love six five as an opening uh -huh. because you can take your two that are the furthest away and move them to the very end of that half of the board. Well, if you have preferred opening moves, then you're well up on me. <laughs> 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 um and we're able to play with each other here, but sometimes, like, you know, we have, there's in and on. You don't know who you're playing usually if you just randomly go. So you don't know what their tactics are necessarily going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes you could do it where you're like, I'm going to start blocking things off on my home court, take things nice and slow, make sure I, I don't leave pieces open. Or you can <clears> just <throat> be like, get everything to the other side of the board. Go, go, go. <laughs> and if you know who you're playing against, you can make that decision a little bit more. Like if my husband and I are playing, I like to do slow and steady, unless I'm like, all right, let's get going. And then he should probably know that I'm, I'm about to leave things open, higgledy piggledy, jump on him when I can. It, it will be chaos. <laughs> all right, I'm leaving that open. Don't jump on it. Uh, can't <laughs> promise anything. Let's see. Um, oh, heck. Now I want to get you safe. Stop that. Get over there. Yeah, that's, no, don't want to do that. No. Hmm. Oh, fine. Do that. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, Speaking locked. Of getting pieces saved. Locked. Good timing, too. Um, I feel like we're a little even, and I can see by the pips that our numbers are even, but I feel also that, like, uh -huh. our you know sometimes you can be really good on pips but you have like five things five checkers left open that are the only ones so it's like okay you're definitely going to get jumped on and your pips will go back up very quickly so one thing i saw when i was uh, looking around in here was they've got some fairly high-end backgammon ais out there that uh you know I've, I ran against the one on this one, just as expert level on for this one here, and didn't mm -hmm. have a chance in any of them. But there are some that are apparently way, way more powerful, and it's, it's gotten to the point where, you know, unless you get bad rolls, and that's possible, the computer's probably going to beat you just about <laughs> every time. Although, I do like that, because you, like, uh -huh. it is a game. It's not like chess, where it's like, it's all skill. There is this chance. So someone could be better than someone else and still lose if they have just terrible goals. And I kind of like that. Yeah. So there is always, you know, that element. You know, you mentioned about how gamble about gambling and how there's the the um uh, element of oh hey, nice speaking of good oh. role. Um the element of chance and all that. Um mm -hmm. uh, that reminds me of the uh um story of um, pinball machines back in the day where second there we go where um we had uh, a court case that took place as to whether or not pinball machines were for gambling and um 
they actually brought in a pinball machine and um, the people defending pinball, he was playing and saying, you know, no, it's a skill-based game. You know, you have to get, you have to be good in order to get the shots you're looking for. And um, he played through a game and made the shot he was trying to make, but, you know, he realized that if he screwed it up, you know, there's a good chance they might lose the case because he had, you know, you have to show that you can actually influence things. Oh my gosh, no pressure. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like how these guys are all mm -hmm. trying to make their way by themselves. Whoop, there we go. Oh no. Oh. That's what happens. And I am going to keep moving that one forward. Because you might come in and jump on it with. Oh, I in. very well might. But if it was over there, then. But I'll be could've... happy to do that. Oh, I don't know. Because I know still running around, I'm going to keep blocking my things up. And I also just like to have things evenly spread out for bearing off. Hmm, let's see here. Uh, I guess we'll try to get him out. Oh, and see, this is why I was blocking things off. Aw. Aw. <laughs> see, you just got straight back in. Yeah, for now. I mean, if I have a two and a one, I will definitely jump on you, though. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. And I'm fine with leaving that open because you can't go backwards. That's something we maybe should have mentioned. You can't go backwards. You have to go forwards and you're you. Of course, I, I roll a just like life can't four, which I can't use, so I have to move things forward. All right, let's see here. I better get my butt moving here. Ugh, I don't like the distribution I've got going on, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Hmm, but I mean, you could roll double sixes, and then it would just be yeah. like you wouldn't need to right. move things around. Well, that's slightly better. Mm -hmm. I did it. Six but I think this just now boils down. Oh, hey, there. Oh, let's see. Your pips are 65. I'm, I'm after you take this off. Two, three. There. How are you going to pour off another one? Another five? Hmm. Let's see. So I guess we'll go with bear you off and chew over there, I suppose. But yeah, unless I get some good sixes going on here, I think I'm in trouble. Mm. We'll see. Well, at least now if you roll another three, you've got one there. You can bear off. Oh. oh. What were you saying about double sixes? About how uh, nice it would be for me if I got them? Uh. All right. I feel like it's, it's probably, probably not likely to come back. But it's not a double win. It would just be a single. You've already got half your pieces off. Yeah. Oh. Come on. Well. Wow. Okay. Wow, you are running the board. All right. Best um, two out of three now. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, and that's the thing also. Um, so we're playing and it's, you can see it's however many out of one, but uh -huh. you can decide to do like best two out of three, best of five, best of eight. Uh -huh. So if you're, you know, doing tournament style, um you, is, you don't have to just do like a, a one-off kind of game um you could say all right you know these two, you know these two players play each other that's two out of three that person will go on to the next one and then the person who loses that can go um against the um loser of a, another match and then one of them will be a, a winner 
So we're going to be doing, uh, coming up here at our library, we're going to be doing a uh, program um, collaboration with our Arts Council and the Smithsonian. We're going to be doing a thing called Timeline Travelers, which I'm looking forward to. Um, I'm going to be one of the instructors. It's a summer camp that's going to take place for um, kids over the, uh, over a week in the summer. And um, we've kind of been trying to figure, oh, hey, doubles. Nice. Um, we've been trying to figure out exactly what it is we want to cover, right? And so um, I was thinking it would be neat to do um, one day on the history of games. And so um, that's probably what we're going to end up doing here. Oh, that was stupid. Oh, well. Um, uh, yeah. I have to. I'm sorry. Ugh. But um, so I would like very much to do... Oh, come on. Oh. Sorry. I would like very much to do something, though, about... Um, uh, hang on a second. Ugh. About um, board games. And so we'll probably play something like this in a royal game of Ur and start out there and then move to chess and then move to like things like uh, snakes and ladders, Monopoly, that sort of thing. I don't know if we'll do Monopoly. I don't think we have time. That game is <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite things like kids for snakes and ladders is whenever you have like the, the life size, because then going down the, mm -hmm. the snakes or slides and up the ladders is fun. Well, I was reading a really interesting um, book recently. Uh, you get those about, um, uh, so uh, there's a book came out just recently called The Devil's Atlas, which was by a guy named Edward Brooke Hitching, which I really liked. And it was about um, maps of the afterlife. And uh, it was really neat. And uh, one of them had like, it was basically a big snakes and ladders board. Um, I think it was from um, uh, Indian uh, mythological um tradition and it had um just this really cool beautiful snakes and ladders board and it was like all illustrated with hell and <laughs> yeah so adding uh, a little uh, theology to your snakes and ladders there you go <laughs> Ooh, i don't think this is going well i've been getting bad rolls you have it's undeniably and that's the see that's the thing like is the beginning great rolls or bad rolls? And we can switch at the end of the Definitely game. Definitely do see. that. Yeah. Oh, you've been getting the number of doubles, doubles. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Well, oops. Gonna have to do that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Of course, that's probably just going to wow. be here. Oh, and wow. You will Lucky. have a chance to cover those up because I rolled exactly. Lucky. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. No, I mean, that's sure, so. sounds great. Oh, wow. Oh, don't forget to block that up so I can't come in on it. You're too. Uh, thank you. <laughs> of course, I screwed myself here, but that's okay. Bound to happen. Oh, I'm sorry. Found I don't out. really have another thing to do. And I can't do anything there. This is definitely a back and forth one. Uh. <laughs> one, two, three. Get out of there, guys. Get out. Go, go, go. Well, at least that one's safe. Um. I can protect that one. I'm gonna start. Yeah, oh, this is I, looking grim again. Yeah, I do kind of like to leave one or two hanging back to sort of make things troublesome for someone. Uh, but then at some point you have to bring it over because yeah. you can't bear off until all your pieces are in their home base. But then once I've got everything nicely blocked up, I'm like, well, I don't want to leave anything open because I did all this hard work to get all my pieces over here. <laughs> uh, hmm. 
And let's do that and that. Oh. So I can either move one twice and leave a white one open, but you might jump on, or I could jump your piece and we'll try this, but then move it oh, out of the way. Yeah, what, what's that question? Any experiences making your own backgammon sets as part of library programming? Oh, I can't move. Your turn. Oh. Uh, I was thinking some of them have good sensory feels or sounds to them. Oh, that would be neat. Yeah, I mean, especially if you know anything about woodworking. But uh, of course, you know, having woodworking tools in the in the meeting room might be a bridge too far for some folks. Um, but no, making new ones. I mean, you could definitely do something with felt or. Um, something along it is what do you mean by sensory fields you know is it something like felt or are you looking something like clacks like uh like wood or yeah like the like i said like the pieces from me, like the, the the stone pieces when you like pick uh, them up you know pick up two clack. and move them the clack 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 is yeah so satisfying um i do have a um a travel board that's like mm. suede that folds up and it doesn't lay flat as well but um I was looking at like some travel ones and there was one that's like a Pendleton blanket that uh -huh. has like a little basically pencil pouch for all the um, checkers and dice to go into, but and you roll the blanket around it. But that's definitely something um, that like I saw that and I thought I could I could weave that. Um, uh -huh. And there was another one I saw that was like quilted and I know libraries have quilting. Um, yep. Yeah, Arshans. so that's definitely because you're appliquing on the points. You basically have just a long piece of fabric and you appliquate the points on mm -hmm. and you could add other artistic things to it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm uh, if you're appliquing things on, you could go crazy because it could have texture. You could be like, all the dark browns are going to be that sequin fabric. And then so whenever someone's, you know, waiting for their turn, they can flip the sequins around or something. Oh, that's clever, yeah. yeah. Ugh. Doubles. And I didn't have six on the three, but that did allow me to take two sixes off. Yeah, I do find like the heavier pieces just more satisfying for me as far as feel. Like if you look at the way this one's oh, set up, clever. if you look wow. in the middle, it's got those hinges. And that's because if you look at most vacuum and boards, they have a hinge so you can close up with all the pieces on the inside. It will have a little handle. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little briefcase. Um, and so the more lighter weight travel ones I don't have that, that heft to them. Well, and it works out real well for backgammon and chess because, of course, you know, um, backgammon uses the middle bit here, whereas... Um, you know, chess and checkers, they'd use the opposite side just fine. Mm -hmm. That's probably a good deal of the attraction. Yeah. Ugh. Come on, got to get over there. <laughs> it's like, go, you go, go. Another doubles and wipe me out. Oh, uh, it depends on what you get. <laughs> no, even if you roll a one and a two, because even if you, if you roll double ones, you can still get in. If you roll the, well, there we go. You'll still be able to get everyone well, uh, in. Oh, well. Might not be able to get them off the board, though. I should say, yeah. I rolled a six and a one. I didn't have a six, five, four, or three, so I took the next highest piece. I am telling you. Okay, okay. You're good. <laughs> okay, and this then, time, Danielle you get all the good idea. rolls. Danielle had a great idea about um, a two-sided quilt, backgammon on one and chess and checkers on the other side. Mm -hmm. I think that's wonderful. Especially since, yeah, we do have a quilter thing. They actually do a, um, um, sorry, hang on a second. They actually do have a, uh, there we go, a um, quilt that they make every year for our library system. And it's a fundraiser. They raffle it off. And so... Nice. Maybe I can prevail on them to do something <laughs> themed next year. Yeah. But they're usually so creative. I hate to <laughs> um, hate to interfere. Mm -hmm. 
Well, in something like the backgammon board, because you're applicating on that's mm -hmm. something a younger, you know, or more inexperienced um, sewist could manage. Uh -huh. And then if they didn't do a great job, it's not like it's structurally going to just collapse, you know. Mm -hmm. I did also, this was a while back, I saw someone did a blanket mm -hmm. and I feel like maybe that was super um, ambitious and a lap uh, blanket would be better, but someone uh, crocheted a backgammon board blanket, like an app. Really? Yes. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. But yeah, I think lap size blanket is probably where I go. Cause like I've been crocheting this granny square Afghan uh -huh. The queen size bed that's like has 756 squares and you put them together and it's got Super Mario jumping. Um, but I did nice. I started this project before I knew better. And now uh -huh. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 756 squares and each one takes 15 minutes plus I've got to sew them together. Uh. Yes. So I think a lap size blanket is probably a better way to go. Makes sense. But hey, if you're feeling ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. What do I want to do here? It's probably the smart way to go. I'll start blocking things up. I'm behind you, but that I'm still gonna block them up just in case yeah, the piece comes over. And now that you don't have any over there, I'm just gonna Get the heck over there. Oh my gosh. Hmm, let's see here. Do that and we won't do that. But uh, I guess I have to do something, so I guess uh -oh. I'm Mm. So I'm gonna drop a link okay. in the chat of yeah. I found this list of like backgammon on film. Although uh -huh. it was like I looked it up because I was like, you know, I remember watching Ever After with Drew Barrymore uh -huh. and the, they were playing backgammon and that was so cool to me. Um and it's not on this list. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but maybe I should message the the uh website people. But they have like even this film, like let me see, the oldest one was Parti de Trick Track. Um, and it was from 1898. Really? Yeah. Huh. Oh, there's the link. Mm. Now I gotta start getting some stuff. Uh, let's see here. I gotta cause trouble. Uh, in the clear. We both have several things <laughs> open. Yeah. This could go very poorly. Again, uh, let's see. I could jump on that red one that you have closer, but I think I'm going to try to block some stuff up. I'm going to double. Ah, all right, I will accept. And All now right. the, the doubling cube goes on my side because it's up to me to decide if I wanted to double, like offer the double yep. again, which is nice because if someone's dominating, they can't just like double, double, double on someone, especially if you are in fact gambling. Okay, that worked mm. out well. And that works out well for you because you can just get on out of there. Yes. Let's see. Mm. 
Hmm. All right, let's see here. Let's rescue you and get you over here. Oh, yeah. But I can't move those other ones, but I can start spreading some things around over here. Mm -hmm. All right. Make it a little less appealing for you to try to jump on me. Oh, wow, nice. Well, maybe. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, you can get all of those other ones, at least on that side of the board, and therefore, it would only take one dice roll to get them to your home space. All right. <gasps> oh. Ooh, sorry. <sighs> I swear. <laughs> I am having really good luck with this right I now, guess. which is good considering my morning. I think I use yeah. all my bad luck in the morning. I can't fault you for that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dead even. Look at that. Is this the kind of thing where I'm uh, they're more off slated? Time. Yeah, I'm more slated to win. Oh, gosh, I get double fives. Um, like, I could double now, and I could, we could be like, all right, the game is over with just the two. Good. But I mean, th and there you go, and you get double threes, so it kind of right. spread out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I was reading one thing that said, you know, for doubling, it's the kind of thing where you shouldn't choose the double unless you've got like an 80% chance of winning, but someone shouldn't accept it unless they have at least a 20% chance of winning. So it's like, uh -huh. I don't have to accept the double if it looks like I'm definitely going to lose. You can just be like, never mind. But if you have a chance of winning, then. I don't think I have that. But we'll try. You never give up and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's looking grim. Well, it's like whenever I play with my family and one of us loses, we still have a piece of board. Well, usually roll and keep going to see how many rolls it would have taken to finish bearing off. Mm -hmm. But of course, your hand tension is different. So you, you can't say those would have been the rolls you would have had mm -hmm. because that's not how dice work. They're yeah. not like, I, these are the rolls. The next 10 rolls are going to be all of this. Too. That's how people think uh, slot machines work. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't have a two, so I guess I'll just move that over. I, you know, and it's so easy, the ones to take off, and then I'll move things back, and then you roll another one, and your one's still empty. It's like, now you get time to double again. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. I mean, I feel like you would probably reject it to double. <laughs> oh, that's... I just needed a one, but thanks for the six and the five. Uh, so well, seven we're at the hour, here. pretty much. I think that uh, that's been pretty well established. You the bad game <laughs> champions here. I I will say I've been playing since I first learned when I was in middle school. I don't play all the time, uh -huh. but I have played a lot. So anyway, if you're ever in a tournament, it's nice to move people around. Because I did when I was in yeah. college. I went to a tournament. And there were a couple of rules. I didn't know that were tournament rules. And so I was like, what? And I, I did not win the tournament. It's fine. Well, they got better. some pretty <laughs> hardcore tournament rules. If you'll take a look on the handout, I was looking at those. They've got, uh, you know, the U.S. official rules. They got the world championships information. They're holding those in Monte Carlo. Oh, well, okay. And so, Field trip. Hey, fancy. Uh, yes, absolutely. We will go and play all the games. <laughs> <laughs> or we could have our own. I, it might be fun to have a uh, classics game championship tournament. Uh, I think we should really integrate that into ALA play. Excellent. Well, we will see you if you come to ALA play, but otherwise we will continue to have uh, fun shenanigans throughout the summer. Just give yes. us the uh, month of June to get everything planned, but back in July, we're going to get restarted with a lot of fun activities and more uh, shenanigans. And thank you all so much for everyone who's joined us today, for everyone who's joined us throughout the year, because kind of 
we're going to start and roll into a new year of uh, games and libraries and all the ways um, those things connect. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Regina. And this has been Games and Gaming Roundtables. Learn and play. We'll see you later. Thanks again. Bye.